What is going on, Ive Warriors? It's your boy Edward V, and today we're gonna to talk about an updated research, updated information in terms of when fat burning starts when intermittent fasting. A division chief of clinical research in the University of Florida has been looking for years into so many different intermittent fasting regimens, so many different research involving that, and he's actually been able to further pinpoint the moment when the body starts to transition from just normal state to actually burning body fat for fuel. We're gonna quickly look through a bunch of studies that have been put together that touches many different intermittent fasting regimens and those findings behind the University of Florida research. Stay tuned. Okay guys, before we dive into the University of Florida research in which Dr. Steven Anton dives deep into a many different alternate day fasting studies, complete alternate day fasting studies, not the modified version, the complete version where you don't eat during your fasting days at all, not even 25% of your caloric intake, and then eating during your feeding days. Now this is very important because I've made a video not too long ago critiquing alternate day fasting studies because it was giving arsenal to people who were very heavily against intermittent fasting to say hey look these fasting studies are saying that intermittent fasting is not effective but the only fasting studies that were showing that intermittent fasting was not effective it wasn't even the 16-8 16-8 studies have been showing massive effectiveness for intermittent fasting even though it's a shorter fasting time frame than alternate day fasting which tends to be about 32 hours of fasting continuous so those things weren't making sense but the reason is because these alternate day fasting that people are selecting that people are choosing is not true fasting is a caloric restriction so if you ever look at an article any article ever that says intermittent fasting doesn't work and this is the proof these studies right here about fasting show that there were no significant difference if you look at those articles and you actually click into the study to see what the study is you will see that nine times out of ten and probably ten times out of ten it is an alternate day fasting study where the participants can eat during their fasting schedule and they can eat up to 500 600 sometimes 700 100 calories is just 25% of their daily caloric intake and they can be spread out as much as they want they can do whatever they want with those calories so the hormonal elements of literally not eating at all because even if you just eat something very very small that doesn't have that many calories if it has glucose for example it will skew the numbers because that insulin sensitivity that insulin baseline level keeping your insulin down and because you're consuming things that can turn into glucose in your body that's not going to happen regardless of how many calories it is so there's just high caloric intake versus low caloric intake that's all it is they're not truly testing fasting versus caloric restriction now that i'm done ranting about that what i want to touch on is after i made that video and not necessarily because i made that video but there was scientists and researchers and medical uh, journalists that were becoming pervy to this when they were seeing that when fasting was done with zero caloric intake the numbers were massively different and where there were significant weight loss in the fasting group versus the normal eating group or the fasting group versus the controlled group because they're becoming pervy to this they're moving away from alternate day fasting in the modified version and trying to see what's going on with alternate day fasting full-blown version and there is a study that will be completed in September of 2019 that will test a one-year trial for the first time ever for intermittent fasting using alternate day fasting in its complete version form not doing the modified version so I can't wait till that study comes out yes we have to wait an entire year for it but it it will be worth it. Let me give you the range that Dr. Steven Anton pointed towards in which he stated that looking at all these ADF studies, looking at all these intermittent fasting 16-8 studies, all these different studies, he was able to determine a more precise number. Now the number range that I indicated in my previous video of when does fat burning start when intermittent fasting was 6 to 12 hours. And the reason it is 6 to 12 hours and I selected that time frame is because that is the post-absorptive range when your body has utilized the energies of the food that you've consumed and it has completed that process and if you don't eat again during that range your body will then start to tackle body fat but dr steven anton has been doing heavy heavy research so i would definitely use his research as a more validated indication of the time frame and his time frame that he mentioned is eight to 12 hours however it's still give or take a few hours so i was kind of right on the money based off of the research that comes from getting into a post-absorptive range he says that from the eight to 
12 hours, that's when the body starts to switch and start to activate slightly some ketone bodies because it's going into that fat burning stage. You actually could go into the fat burning stage before you go into the ketosis stage. You might not be in ketosis, but you are burning body fat once you hit that eight hour to 12 hour range based on Dr. Steven Anton's research. And he's actually more likely basing this off of the post absorptive range as well as the research that he's been doing with intermittent fasting, looking at all these different participants, working with them and testing all their biomarkers and biological functions, metabolic functions in the body. I want to do an interview with Dr. Steven Anton, so I definitely went ahead and uh, contacted him and his team, and uh, hopefully we can get an interview uh, for this channel. That will be fantastic. I think the work that he's doing, uh, focusing on intermittent fasting heavily, he's very reputable. He actually is a doctor in the specific diseases of obesity and chronic illness, so it isn't like a doctor about something else talking about intermittent fasting. It's a doctor who's focusing on these elements in the human beings and also looking through intermittent fasting because of the high benefits that come from intermittent fasting and the potential to correct so many medical problems just using uh, the format of intermittent fasting. And who doesn't love when doctors actually can see all of this research and understand that there's something there. Even if it's a non-pharmacological method of improving health, it's very honorable when doctors go that route, go the intermittent fasting route, simply because the research is there. So hopefully I can get that interview with him, but let me go ahead and talk about some extrapolated studies that they put together to show the benefits that intermittent fasting is building now that there's more and more research to look at. But we still need more research and especially the year trial that's going to come out in September 2019. But we actually need to see those kind of studies to see what it can actually do in the long term. However, we're going to look into these studies that were taken. This is not a meta-analysis because what a meta-analysis is, is that they take similar scenarios in the studies and then combine the numbers and then see what the average numbers are are based on the similarities of each studies. However, these studies are not similar because what they were trying to do is actually just incorporate as many intermittent fasting studies as they can, as many human intermittent fasting studies as they can. So they wanted to look at Ramadan. They wanted to look at the 16-8. They wanted to look at time-restricted feeding. They wanted to look at alternate day fasting. They wanted to look at modified alternate day fasting. So they took all of that information and they threw it all into one paper to see what the benefits are and then they broke up the summarization between each group so if it was alternate day fasting modified alternate day fasting as well time restricted eating etc etc and i'm gonna link it down below i'm not gonna dive so deep into it but it's linked below so you can look at it for yourself but what they found in these studies they found that there's a positive modifiable lifestyle in terms of how you consume you could actually train yourself to eat less simply because you're fasting you are more hyper aware of the food and the caloric intake uh, than if you were to just spread your food throughout the day. It's much harder for you to pinpoint the amount of calories that you're taking in when you're spreading your food out than when you're doing just intermittent fasting. This study also found that intermittent fasting as a whole, incorporating all aspects of intermittent fasting, is that it can reduce basal concentration of many different metabolic biomarkers. Things like insulin and glucose are reduced and insulin sensitivity is increased nearly across the board when it comes to all these different intermittent fasting protocols that you can utilize. And another important aspect is that the overall evidence shows that intermittent fasting is not harmful physically or mentally. And by mentally, they mean in terms of hunger, in terms of inducing hunger. It actually does not induce hunger once your body gets acclimated to the regimen. This is a normal, healthy weight, overweight, and obese individuals. They also show that alternate day fasting is effective for weight loss, reduced insulin, concentration, reduced glucose concentration, but they saw that in modified alternate day fasting, it did not have those benefits in terms of weight loss, but did have the benefits in terms of insulin sensitivity. So further illustrating that modified alternate day fasting where you can eat during your fasting periods are not effective methods of intermittent fasting. So please stop using these modified alternate day fasting studies as your proof of the effectiveness of intermittent fasting being non-effective. You're just simply either uninformed or just being misleading by this point. And in a a journal where they discussed uh, Stephen Anton's research in which he determined that around the 8 to 12 hours is when you start activating that fat burning system. He looked at 10 alternate day fasting studies and it was 10 out of 10 in terms of 
the fasting group losing a significant amount of weight over the control group and increasing their metabolic biomarkers. So of course, more studies need to come in and more studies are coming in, but these things are allowing us to use the post-absorptive range, use these studies, look at the participants, look at the individual metabolic structures and, and the metabolic shifts in their bodies to determine and to be more precise with when the fat burning actually starts. And I hope this video was very helpful for you guys and I wanna thank my patrons from my Patreon and I'm gonna put their names right up here.